Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop. This is episode 20, um, coming thick and fast at the minute. Um, so this episode is going to be um, the strip down and overhaul of a record number two vice. So this is the second uh, vice that I've got. Um, I've already done the first vice and I've shown just the updates of that really in a previous video of what I've done with that one. So um, I did put in the comments um, if you'd like to see just a dedicated episode on sort of the tear down and overhaul of the, of the other vice then let me know and I have three or four responses saying that that would make a good episode so um, as, as I stand today I'm still waiting for lifting gear to arrive so that I can fix the mill and get the mill in position so I'm kind of at a bit of a, 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 a pause at the moment in proceedings on that so um, what I'll do is use that time to get the vice um, sorted out so this is the vice, um, it's, it used to belong to my great uncle, um, I've owned it for probably 20 years, most of that time it's been sat in a box, not really doing anything. Um, since the workshop's been built, I've kind of refurbished, this has just been sat on top of the bench over there, not really bolted down or anything, but it's, it's just been sat waiting for some uh, attention, so that's what this episode's going to be about. So I'll just bring you back quickly and show you the other vice for, for reference that I've already done and then we'll focus in on this and we'll start the strip down. So this is, uh, this is the other record vice that's already had some attention. Um, this was an eBay purchase. Um, I, I've bid on it two or three times actually. It kept getting relisted. Um, I just kept putting cheeky bids on. And uh, I eventually picked it up for about £20 I think it was with a bit of postage on top. Um, so that got fully stripped. Um, the ultrasonic cleaner was used for all the small parts and then the rest of it was wire brushed down, painted um, and sort of fettled where it needed fettling and then rebuilt um, and that's now bolted to the bench and um, in permanent use and, and very useful so I want to get the other vice up to the same standard. Um, as I've said in a previous video, you know, some people take these restorations to the nth degree, polishing all the surfaces and all that. It's not, that's not what this video is about. This video is just about a general strip down, a clean up, a repaint, um, just to bring it back to the sort of same, same look as this, um, and then a rebuild. Because um, I want to, you know, I want to use it basically. It's going to be a, a tool to be used, so I, I don't want to spend endless hours polishing surfaces that, that then I'm frightened to touch with anything in case I mark them or disturb them. So it's just going to get built to the same standard as this. This one's in slightly worse condition, it's had quite a bit of abuse over time and I've, I've filed most of the abuse away but I've, you know, it's, it, it's a working vice so it, that's, that's what I'm aiming for with the other one. So um, I'll bring you back in a moment and we'll start the, uh, the tear down. Right guys, so this is the vice, just before I strip it I'll just show you, it's, you know, it's in, it's in decent nick, it all works. It all does what it should do, which considering it's been uh, kicking around for 20 odd years in boxes and stuff is uh, is good. So that means it was obviously put away in good order. Um, the vice jaws themselves, again, are in good condition really. There's no, there's no real damage in it. There's some tiny bits of damage down the sides where hacksaws over time have just caught the casting. But again, that's nothing. It's it's a working vice. So we'll uh, we'll crack on with the. Uh, with the teardown so when you're taking one of these to bits there's a certain order that you need to do it in um, and if you try and do it in the wrong order you'll end up in a mess so hopefully this will be a useful reference for anybody else who's going to do one of these so there's two there's two key things that retain all of this together there's a under here there's a spring that sits just inside this casting here with a, a split pin and a washer that holds that in place and then there's a pin that goes through the base casting here that holds the feed, well, feed nut, the um, the threaded nut in place to stop it moving in and out as you tighten the vice up. So they're the two retaining uh, features, if you want to call them that, that you need to remove to take the vice apart. Um, and you need to start with the with the the spring and the washer that's at this end. So we'll uh, we'll undo the vice and show that. So if you look inside there now, you've got the, the 
actual threaded shaft you've got a washer, a spring and there's a, a split pin that's holding that washer in place I don't know whether that's showing up on the camera or not there's the head of the split pin and then obviously at the other side you've got the two tails so I'll just grab some tools, get some tools together and uh, and I'll bring you back probably on a time lapse and we'll start to start taking this apart Right guys, I've uh, I've knocked the, the dowel pin out. So I don't, on the time lapse, I've removed the split pin and I've removed the um, the spring and the washer that sits just behind it, which is there. And the split pin holds all of that in place up against the back of this surface inside the casting. At the other end of the part where I pointed there, there's a dowel that runs through the, the base casting, and that sits behind the the nut um, that. That, that sits on the shaft basically. Um, so once you've removed all of those, the, you know, the, the spring and the washer and the split pin, you can then wind out the, the shaft completely. So just wind that straight the way out, all the way out the front. And then the next thing to do, you need to remove the, the nut in here. Um, and it's on like a, it's on a dovetail and you'll be able to see that once I've uh, removed it, how that sits into the base casting. Now there's, there's several ways you can try and attack this. Um, you can do it using the this itself. You can wind this thread back in if you want to and, and tap the end of this at the front to knock it out the back. It works but it's not the best way because you, you're applying you know you're applying force where all the threads are inside the knot so it's it's it'll do the job but if it's really stuck in there tight you're just going to end up damaging these threads and probably damaging the threads inside the nut so there's an easier way um, and it's a way that I've used on the previous vise so once you get to this position if you slide if you slide the vise completely open it won't come apart because obviously the nut's in the way and then I've just got a piece of aluminium here uh, it's a drift um, and all I'm going to do is, is drop this into the into there like that and then I'm just basically going to sandwich the whole thing together and I'm just going to use the force of the vise as a quick push like that and that the drift then should knock the, the nut out so apologies if this camera shake guys because I've got the, the camera on the bench for this so I'll just give that a hit now and hopefully the, um, the nut will come out so there you go nice and simple um, and there's the nut so the nut just sits straight out the end, nice and easy. And then hopefully you can see there, it's on a on a dovetail, and that that dovetail fits into the the base casting on the inside. So that's the easiest way I've found of getting that out without doing any damage to it. Um, it's far better than trying to use the actual threads inside the nut to knock it out. At that point now, we should be able to take the two parts of the casting completely apart. Remove my drift, and now that's at a point ready for um, basically cleaning up. The only other thing to remove, and this this is probably where we're going to have some fun and games, is to take the the jaws off. Uh, these screws have been in there, well, at least 25 years that I know of since I've owned it. They've not been off, um, and I would imagine they've probably been in there for a good 25 years prior to that. So they're going to be pretty well tight at those. Um, on the other vice, I needed to use my impact driver to actually remove these. We'll give this one a go with just a, a good quality screwdriver for a start and see if we can remove them. And I'll put you back on time lapse to do that. Alright, they're not, as I suspected, they're not going to come out um, easily. So um, I've, uh, I've got the impact driver out, and these are really useful. Um, tools uh, if, you, if you ever see one at a car boot sale or anything they're normally going for pence it's really worth picking one up so basically if you've never seen one before you can change the direction of travel by twisting it like that so one's one way is tightening one way is loose, loosening and you can tell it's under spring pressure so the whole thing is really spring loaded um, and you can tell by pressing 
on the spring and watching which way the, the bit goes, whether you're in sort of loosening or tightening mode. So that's in loosening mode. So now as I hit the back of the um, impact driver, it will, obviously the force holds the bit into the screw at the same time as the chuck twists in the right direction. Um, so we'll, um, we'll have a go at that. Again, the camera's on the bench, so this might get a bit shaky. I'll put it on time lapse, um, but I'm going to be thrashing around a bit trying to get these out. So uh, I'll put you on time lapse while I do that. There we go, guys. That's uh, that's the strip down complete. So there's not much to these really. You've got the main casting, you've got the sort of the fixed jaw in the base main casting, you've got the moving jaw casting, you've got the the shaft, the main shaft with the with the handle, um, two jaws, um, two hard jaws, a spring, a washer, um, a dowel pin. A split pin that I'm going to need to replace because that that's so brittle it's just broken on removal so that's no good we'll have to find something else to go in there and then obviously just the four screws there that hold the the jaws in place so all of the small parts the the, the feed nut the, the rice jaws the spring and everything else is going to go into the um, ultrasonic cleaner um, to just remove the worst of the oxidation off everything um, and while they're in there, I shall get on with the wire brush on, on both of the main castings and we'll be removing certainly the top layer of paint um, from the castings um, ready, for, uh, ready for repaint. So I'll bring you back when we're at that point. So just before we get into um, sort of paint removal and clean up, I just thought I'd show you the, um, the bit that you probably couldn't see. So there's the... Um, the, the sort of nut um, that, that sits on the shaft that I showed you before that's got the dovetail fitting on it. If you look in here at the back of the vise in the casting you'll see the, the female dovetail and basically that nut slides into that dovetail there that's how it works and the shaft obviously sits through the centre and then the dowel that I removed the dowel pin which is there sits there's a hole in the casting there and the dowel pin goes in there and it sits up behind that casting so that when you put load on the vise the, the dowel pin actually holds the, the nut in place and stops it moving so that's, that's really the, the function of the, of the dowel so that's all of the bits I um, just thought I'd show that before we, um, we get into paint removal and clean up just in case anybody else is doing one of these just so that they can see how all the bits fit together. It's very simple really how it works but very effective. You know, It's a design that's been on the go for donkeys, donkeys years and they still make them today I think record. Um, it's a very tried and tested design, very good design um, and, and it works very well. So I'll bring you back um, when we're putting the, um, the small parts in the ultrasonic cleaner and when we're going to start stripping paint. Right guys, there's all the um, all the small parts, so the jaws and the the nut, the washers, the screws for the um, for the jaws, and we're just going to pop those into the uh, the ultrasonic bath for an hour and a half, and we've put some of the um, um, deoxidisation uh, chemical in. And to be honest, it's it's mainly the jaws, the, the bits that haven't been that haven't had oil on them. Through, through service and they're not that bad actually there's a bit of surface rust so we'll, we'll give them a clean up in the tank um, and while we're busy um, removing the paint off the off the main castings so we'll just pop those in and we'll put that on for uh, about an hour and a half 50 degrees and we'll see what those look like a bit later. Uh, I'll just set up now for um, for uh, focusing in on the on the castings and getting the uh, getting the paint and the, all the muck off those, getting them ready for uh, a bit of a fettle up and then uh, a repaint.
Right guys, that's got um, that's got all the paint and sort of the, the mess out the inside. It needs a wipe down, obviously, and a degrease before paint. But before we get on to that, I'm just going to give it a once over with a file. And, you know, this isn't to remove any of the base material. This is just to make sure there's no high spots where it's been knocked or banged or whatever. And I, this isn't in bad condition, really. So the trick here is not to not to use any pressure just to let the file do the work really and just gently gently run over the edges and you'll see the high spots coming off and it, nothing more than that really that's all it needs and the same on the dual locations just a bit of a rub all you know nice and clean now a bit of a sharp edge there we'll just take that off and that's really it I'll um I'll put it back on a time lapse while I do the rest of it on both pieces and then uh, we'll bring you back when we're uh, giving it a degrease So the next job really is just the tapped holes um, for the for the jaws where the jaws go in. So these are quarter width. width. Um, so I'm just going to run a tap down and uh, clean the threads out. So I'll do the rest of those on uh, on time lapse. I'm sure you don't want to watch me uh, do that another three times. So that's the holes cleaned out, guys. So really now it's just a case of a, a bit of a final clean up, especially inside here where there's some bits of stuff still kicking around and where you can't really wipe it that well. I'm not going to paint the inside of here but I just want it clean so that there's no muck dropping out onto the painted surfaces when I do get to painting so we're just going to give that a quick brush out um, and then I'll just brush loosely around the rest of it and then we'll have a good clean up and then we'll um, get some clean paper towel and we'll give these a, a good degrease um, ready for uh, a coat of paint. I'm just using a dry paintbrush for this. It's the easiest way. I've loosened everything up with a wire brush in there, so it should all just come out fairly, fairly easily. And like I say, I'm not, I'm not after getting it immaculately clean in there, so I'm not painting in that portion. So it's just really getting rid of the loose stuff. And again, similarly in there, I'm just going to give that a quick brush. It's got some sawdust and 
just some general bits of muck in there, it's nothing. I'm not painting in there again, I'm just going to leave that. Um, it's not painted originally when it's uh, sold, it's just left as cast. So we're just going to leave that in its original state. Um, no real need to paint that. So we'll just get rid of the any big bits that are going to fall out. No, I can't remember actually. I don't think I did. I don't think I touched this bottom surface of the pile. something there. Got some glue or something. Scrape that off. Right, there we go. So the next job I'm going to do now is just scotch bright the um, the bare metal surfaces just to bring those back to um, just just a bit cleaner really. It doesn't need it, but I'm just going to remove sort of on these side bearing surfaces here. I filed them to take the high spots off, but there's just a bit of um, a bit of corrosion left on certain bits. So we're just going to give them a quick rub with some scotch bright and just try and get all the dirty operations out of the way before you do a final um, degrease and clean up ready for paint. So I'm just going to go with a bit of scotch right. And I'm not doing this with oil, I'm just going to do it just dry. For what we're doing, it doesn't need any, uh, any oil on it. Again, you can see there, it's just getting rid of the um, surface rust. There's just some little bits of surface rust on. So I'll probably put that on a time lapse to finish that off, um, and I'll do the other one the same, and then we're, uh, we'll have a good tidy up. Right guys, we'll um, just get the um, the small parts out of the ultrasonic tank. So you can see there, that's done a that's done a really good job. Again, right, I'm really for the cost of that tank. I really do like it. It's uh, it does an excellent job. 
So you can see there that's taken like the casting for the for the um, the threaded shaft. That's just taken that right back to the original cast. It's uh, it's it's done a fantastic job. So we're just going to give these a quick dry, and they'll dry anyway because they're about 50, 60 degrees C at the minute. So they're quite warm. So they'll just um, dry any moisture off. But again, if you look at the the vice jaws. Uh, you know, all the all the rust has come off those completely. They're just back to bare metal. They've got kind of a black look about them, but uh, it's certainly taken all of the um, all of the rust and oxidation off. Oxidisation, sorry. So we'll just um, let those dry off, and then what I shall do with all of those? I've got a little tub here with. Um, this is from the last vice I did, just with some oil in it, and I'm just going to chuck them all in there, just so that they don't flash over with rust, um, until I come to uh, rebuild the vice. That's everything all done, nice and clean. You know, even the screws. Again, my camera doesn't focus particularly well, but you can see there they've they've cleaned up. They've cleaned up really nice. It was about that ultrasonic wash. I think it was about twenty-five odd pounds, something like that, from Amazon. Um, just a cheap and cheerful thing, but it's uh, it, it makes life really easy when you're doing stuff like this because it, you just chuck them in, forget about it, and uh, you know get them out. Well, it's like brand new. You wouldn't think that screw was probably 60, 70 years old um, and it's not been touched for that length of time. They've come up really nice. So that's all the small parts. I'll chuck them in a bath of oil and, um, and then we'll get on to uh, degreasing the, um, the main castings. I'll bring you back when we're doing that. So we're going to crack on now and degrease the, the main castings ready for a coat of paint and all I'm going to use for that is uh, methylated spirits as it's called in the UK um, I think you call it mineral spirits in the US um, so it's just a, um, an ethanol liquid um, just before I do there's all the small parts there now sat in a, in a bath of oil and they'll just sit in there ready until we rebuild so I'll just do a, a small portion of this on sort of normal camera speed and then I'll flip to um, time lapse again. So it's just literally, you know, get, get plenty of that on a, on a rag or a bit of paper. Um, I tend to use this, it's Blitz they call it, it's, um, kitchen roll in the UK we can get. It's really heavy duty stuff. Um, I wouldn't advise you using just normal kitchen roll because for stuff like this it tends to start falling, even this falls apart a little bit and you end up with little bits of paper stuck everywhere but um, this stuff's pretty pretty robust, it, it, it lasts a long time. So that's the idea really, just going to go over all the surfaces and just make sure completely uh, oil and grease free and you can see it's fetching off the paint um, you know the base level paint where and that will just be the dust that's left behind from wire brushing really so we'll just keep going over that until you know we don't see any more of that coming off so that's the general idea I'll um, I'll stick it, stick it on a, uh, a time lapse while I do the rest of these two main castings and, uh, and then we'll bring you back. Hello 
there we go guys, that's both the castings done. That only took sort of five minutes to do both of those really. It's I don't need a lot of work um, once I've had the wire wheel. And I was just reflecting as I was stood here and I'm going to not get on my soapbox but that fills me with uh, with with sort of happiness of what I've got in my hand. So, made in England. You don't see that very much these days. Um, this was when Britain was great and it made decent stuff. Um, and I'm sure there's still pockets of things that are made well in, in the UK but uh, certainly not certainly not how it used to be when this was made back sort of 50 60 years ago but uh, anyway as I said I'm not going to get on my soapbox about it but uh, it's uh, it's a good quality item I would I would love to see a strip down of an Asian import vice a copy of this after 50 years of use 50 60 years of use because I bet for a uh, you know, oh, my next pay packet it won't look as good as this thing does and it won't operate as well if, if at all so uh, anyway I'm off my soapbox now we'll, we'll crack on and start getting ready for um, for paint which is uh, the next job so I'll just get set up for that and uh, we'll bring you back when we're putting some colour on it now what we're going to do now this is a, a brand new paintbrush they're just some cheapy 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 paintbrushes that um, I'm using this Hammerite um, paint smooth right and if you want to use thinners with this you have to buy a special pot of thinners and for the small job I was doing these two vices it's actually cheaper to buy a dozen of these paintbrushes than it is to buy a tin of thinners so basically I'm going to use one of these every time I do a coat of paint and then just sling it in the bin and I know that's a bit wasteful but um, there was no thinners available at the time when I bought the paint as well so that's what we're doing um, so what I'm going to do is a brand new paintbrush is because I've degreased this now the only thing that should be on this is just paper from from the wipe down so I'm just going to go over it with the with the brand new brush and just give it a last sort of brush down make sure there's no little bits of paper and what that will also do, if there's any loose bristles in this that are going to come out, now's the time that they can come out when I, you know, before I get paint on the brush. So that's the plan. So we'll just give that a quick, a quick brush down. Get rid of all the, all the little bits of paper that might be on there or anything else, dust or whatever. And that's probably about it. We'll just do the same with this one. Yeah, I'm not going for, like I said before, I'm not going for a, something that I'm, I'm never going to want to use because it looks too nice. I'm, I'm just going for bringing it back to its original look and functionality. Um, there's absolutely no point spending all that effort on something if the first thing you're going to put near it is a file and a hacksaw because you're going to damage your paintwork anyway at some point it's inevitable so we'll just give that a quick brush down there we go right so we're going to get into this tin of paint um, the trouble with this stuff is once you've broken the seal on the tin the first time if you leave it for any length of time it tends to get a skin on it this hasn't this hasn't done which is good. So at this point I'm going to get hate mail from people who are tool, you know, proper tool aficionados. Um, but this is this is how I do it. <laughs> so I'm just wiping screwdriver down with the mess that I've got on the rag so it's clean, there's no grease on it. And I can hear you all groaning. But anyway, we're just going to give that a quick stir. Make sure it's well stirred up. This uh, smooth right paint, you can paint it straight onto uh, bare metal surfaces um, and even straight onto rust actually it says on the tin. Um, I'm not quite sure how successful that would be uh, but that's uh, apparently what it's uh, capable of. It's got a primer built into the paint so you don't need to do any any form of priming or anything like that. It's very thick, it doesn't paint particularly well. Um, and I was hoping, I was rather hoping it was going to be a bit warmer. It's probably about 10 degrees here. Um, it's the middle of summer, so that's kind of what you expect in Scotland. <laughs> um, but this stuff does paint better 
um, when it's warmed up a bit and if I'd have thought what I could have done was just drop the tin into the water in the uh, ultrasonic bath before I emptied it out and just warmed it up a little bit but anyway we didn't do that so we'll just give that a quick wipe off and uh, nobody would know any different nobody would know that I'd uh, I'd just done that. So I'll start off at normal speed and then what I'm going to do then is flick to uh, time lapse again. So basically I've got a, this piece of plastic here which I'm going to use to move this around once it's wet when I can't hold it anymore because basically all the surfaces that you're going to touch you, you're not going to be able to pick this up without getting paint on yourself so we're going to start with the underside that's going to be facing down so we'll start with this bottom bottom piece and you know this stuff you have to be fairly quick with this stuff now I'm not masking anything because again there's really no need um, what I shall do if I've gone over any of the um, I've got a bristle coming out already so that's, uh, that's shot up theory well and truly on the back side right. um, if I've gone over any of the bare metal surfaces that need to be bare metal towards the end I'll just give them a quick little bit of file before I reassemble it and, and remove the paint from those areas once it's uh, once it's set um, like I said I'm not going for uh, perfection with this we're just going for bringing it back to its original and you can see there it's very uh, it's very thick sticky paint is this it's quite it looks horrendous when you first put it on but what happens is as it cures it tends to it tends to knit together and it looks a bit better. It will need two coats this and I'll film the first coat. I won't film the second one because um, it's just going to be more of the same. So that's a reasonable amount on there. So I'll just finish this small piece off here and then uh, I'll go back to uh, to time lapse while I while I paint the rest of it. There you go guys, that's, um, that's the first coat done um, on both bits, so that will need to be left overnight now to to cure. Uh, I'll get the second coat on tomorrow um, and we'll clean the, um, the screw shaft up which just needs a wire brush and just a general sort of clean up. And, uh, and then the night after that we should be ready to rebuild it all back together. Um, last final tip, if you're using this stuff or similar paint to it, this one coat sort of enamel type metal paint, when you are using it multiple times, when you put the lid back on, just do that with it. And what that does is it will leave a, a ring of paint around the inside of the lid where the gap is and it just helps to seal it from letting any air get in there and it just 
helps it last a bit longer. So I think that's it for tonight. I'll um, I'll bring you back tomorrow night when we're sticking the second coat on. But uh, already that's uh, that's looking much more like it would have done originally when it was uh, when it was first purchased many many years ago. So we'll bring you back tomorrow and do a bit more. So we're just going to tidy this up now where I did the painting. Obviously I didn't do any masking as I said and there's a couple of bits that have just gone over. And for what I'm doing this is okay you know it's not, I'm, as I said before I'm not after a, something that's uh, you know not going to be used. The first thing that's going to go near this vice is a hacksaw or a file so I'm just trimming the paint back. Just using a file. So it's dead easy and dead quick. It's a lot quicker than faffing around with masking tape. So over all the sort of bare surfaces now I'm just going to give them a rub and just take any any over, over sort of painting off. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Get the idea. I'll um, I'll put it on the uh, time lapse again and just finish off the two pieces. So we're just going to clean the small parts up now um, out of the bath of oil, ready for the ready for the rebuild, um, and I'll put that on a on a time lapse as well. All I'm doing is wiping the oil off, and what I'll do with the feed nut is I'll just go over that with the uh, with a file just to make sure there's you know there's no raised edges and high spots, especially on the the dovetail where it fits into the vice. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll stick you back on a time lapse while I do that. Right guys, this is the hardest part of the whole vice restoration. Um, getting the 
pipes, the washer back and the spring compressed um, and the pin back in. Now I haven't got the, the split pin that I took out is uh, was brittle and it just broke. I don't have any big split pins um, so I've, I've made a bit of 3mm diameter just plain steel and that will be fine. It doesn't come out because it's, it's almost captured by the casting shape and also the fact that it's under constant spring pressure and the washer is um, uh, sort of twisted if you like what's the word I'm looking for, parabola parabola shape so it, it holds it captive in there the whole time and that's what I did on the old vice and that's been absolutely fine so um, the way I've found to do this or the, you know, the way I've sort of found to do this you, you need to compress this spring, you can't do it by hand unless there's, you've got two people so toolmaker's clamped and it's just sat in there behind the washer I don't know whether this will show but if you have a look in there so I've got the, the toolmaker's clamp up against the casting of the vise and the washer the other side of it and basically what I'm going to do now is wind the vise in which will compress the spring and then I've got these are really useful by the way archery forceps are fantastic for this sort of thing a pair of archery forceps gripping the steel pin and uh, hopefully at the right time I'll just be able to pop the steel pin in so here we go let's give it a let's give it a whirl see what happens so you can see the spring is compressing up there now so I can now get into the hole I'll drop the pin in let the spring pressure go against it so it doesn't fall through and now I just need to tap that in just get a drift I just need to check yeah I thought that might happen unfortunately because of the way the um, the spring compresses with that method it doesn't compress top and bottom the same so the pins actually come through the spring at the back I'll just tap that back through Try and lever that over underneath. There we go. Still need three hands. There we go. So that's now found its natural place on the sort of spring. I don't know if you can see that. The spring itself is a kind of a parabola shape. No, that's a parabola is not the right word. Yeah, parabolic. It is. So the spring's a parabolic shape. So what's happened now is that pin has found its found the low spots, if you like, on that on that uh, on that washer. So that will never move now under that spring pressure. That's always going to hold that captive. Um, it's not the most ideal way of doing it, but uh, it works. When I get some. Uh, sp um, new split pins um, eventually I'll just pop this back out and put a, a proper split pin in there but that will certainly do for now so other than a general oil up of the areas that haven't had any oil yet just to stop any rust that's the um, that's the vice finished so I'm happy with that. That's brought that back to um, you know, it's not its original standard, but it's certainly back to a a decent standard. That I'd be happy to have sat on my bench. So um, yeah, I think that's probably it's certainly 25 years or so I've had it, and 
I know my great uncle would have had it most of his life, so it, it, it's, we're probably talking something there that's probably 70, 80 years old, I would imagine. And, um, and that's in, that's in really good condition now. So hopefully, um, in another 70 or 80 years when I'm not around anymore, somebody else will be making good use of it and it'll still be in, uh, in decent shape. So that's really the end of the, uh, restoration project. And as I've said a couple of times through the video, you know, it's not been about making it all shiny and, um, you know, it, it's been about putting it back to a usable state um, that, that is, is going to be useful to me in the shop. Um, so what I'm going to do now is pick my position where I'm going to mount this, get it mounted to the bench, and, um, and now I've got the decent vice that's, that's in really good condition for good stuff. And I've got the other one that you've seen me do before and using before, which is slightly worse. It's slightly, you know, not, not in such good condition. And I shall use that for the rough jobs where I've got angle grinders or welders or whatever it is around it. And I'll keep this one for keep this one for best. So, uh, so that's the end of the rice restoration. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'll, there's so many video clips I've filmed. I'll, I'll string it all together and, and make it... Uh, you know, give it some continuity so you can follow the restoration through and um, if anybody's got any questions about how I did any certain bit of it if you're doing one yourself just by all means drop me a comment you know I do I do enjoy comments and and the responses I get from from um, the subscribers so um, we'll leave it at there so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and um, we'll catch you on the next episode <laughs>